Not since the dinosaurs disappeared have animals been going extinct as fast as they are now. Entire species vanish every year. And while our hearts are moved by the plight of the biggest, whales or elephants, the fiercest, tigers, even sharks, and certainly the cutest, like pandas, what about the slowest? The turtle and its land-loving cousin, the tortoise, have been plodding along, slow and steady, for more than 200 million years. But their hard shells are little protection from human predators and a booming illegal animal trade. It may be too late to save many of them, but they have found an unlikely protector in a man named Eric Good. Some of New York City's hottest hotels, restaurants, and bars are owned by Eric Good. Hello. Hi, I need to say hello to people that I haven't said hello to. Hi. That's made him rich and comfortable with the glitterati and fashionistas. But behind the scenes, he caters to a far less glamorous clientele, endangered turtles and tortoises. How did the whole interest, if not obsession, with turtles and tortoises begin? As a child at six, I at six. was given a small Herman's tortoise. And that created a budding interest in the natural world and in reptiles and snakes and lizards and in my hard-shelled friends that I just fell in love with. And so it was a progression. It's an obsession that takes him as far from the glitz of the New York scene as imaginable. He wades through swamps, turns over rocks, wrangles exotic snakes and other reptiles as he searches for his first love. What a beautiful tortoise. This is our first Samobates tentorius trimeni. Turtles and tortoises trace back before the dinosaurs, but now today, about half of the over 300 species are headed toward extinction, largely because of habitat loss and an insatiable market for them, particularly in Asia, as food, medicine, rare collector's items, and pets. How big a business is the turtle tortoise trade? China alone is probably in the hundreds of millions of dollars. This trade flourishes because the payoff is huge and the chance of getting prosecuted and, and incarcerated are very low. If you're going to be in something illicit, this is the safest or one of the safest. And that's a tragedy. Eric Good is spending a million dollars a year of his own money to fight the trade in places like Madagascar, an island off the coast of Africa that's vastly undeveloped. People are so poor. and Some of these villages make less than a dollar a day, or it's basically subsistence living. And there just simply isn't the political will of the country to really enforce you know, what's going on with their natural heritage, whether it's tortoises or other wildlife. Fly over Madagascar, and you can see why conservationists say it's bleeding to death. Rivers run red with soil erosion from logging and slash and burn agriculture that have wiped out animal habitats and 90% of the country's forests. And yet, because of its isolation, Madagascar is a paradise of plants and animals found nowhere else, like the wide-eyed lemurs, chameleons that sparkle with color, geckos that hide in plain sight, more than 200 kinds of frogs, and five species of rare turtles and tortoises. Eric was taking us on a trek to find the fastest disappearing animal in Madagascar, the plowshare tortoise, whose shrinking habitat is so deep in the wilderness, it's only accessible by boat. This tortoise is one of the world's most endangered animals. It is the world's most endangered tortoise, and it has an incredibly high price on its head. Asian countries love gold, and this is a gold tortoise. And so literally, these are like gold bricks that one can pick up and sell. We were following the path the poachers take, landing on a deserted beach. And off we went on a long hike. We walked through scrub brush in blazing heat for almost an hour. The sun starts to go up too high, they just disappear. The once plentiful plowshare population here, he says, could be down to as few as 300 adults. And this is where the guards are based. Good has helped hire around 40 locals to go out and find the tortoises before the poachers do. We have to be on a team of uh, many people. Different lines, 30 feet apart. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go. 
We lined up the way police do when they search for a missing person. And by midday, with a lot of help, we got lucky. They found one. Oh, look at that. How wow. did you ever find it? Wow. Oh, it's a be <gasps> beautiful female. So this is a just a perfect, <laughs> oh perfect God. female. Now this tortoise is a crown jewel. Oh. This is a beautiful animal. Look at her. Yeah, and, and you can see this is this incredible domed shell that's unique with this tortoise. Nothing has, no turtle has this shell like an army helmet. This is a very, very valuable tortoise. Based on his own research, Good says a tortoise like this could sell for $60,000 in Asia. To try and stop the trafficking, he and his colleagues have begun doing the unthinkable. It's a drill. Oh my God. Yeah. He has to be very careful not to hit the bone because then we'll draw blood. So he's going just that very carefully, 16th of an inch into the shell. They want to leave an indelible gash, a scar, that makes the tortoises undesirable to collectors. I have to tell you, watching Angelo do this, it, it's painful. It is painful to watch. Yeah, no, it's, it's very hard. But I think we're at a point where we're down to so few animals. There's so few of these tortoises left that we have to really take extreme measures scarring mm. the shells of these animals, defacing them, etching. Mm. Is that working? Can you tell yet? It's too soon to know if that's working. It breaks your heart to have to do that to this beautiful, beautiful shell. I mean, we, you can compare it maybe to chainsawing off a rhinoceros's horn to save a rhino. I mean, how horrible is that? To show us what he's up against, Eric took us to a market in a small city called Mahajunga, where we saw, with our hidden camera, shells of endangered tortoises out in the open on display for sale. And soon we were being offered live tortoises. What is this? This is a... This is a spider tortoise from southern Madagascar. This is critically endangered. And the Chinese sometimes just puncture the shell just to eat the liver out of this tortoise. One of the vendors showed up with something in a plastic bag. What is it? It was a radiated tortoise on the endangered species list. Asking price, just $400. We were even offered a plowshare tortoise if we paid up front and waited several days. But that would have meant breaking Madagascar and international laws against smuggling an endangered animal. How hard was it for you to not take that tortoise and save its life? If you leave it behind, who knows where it's going to end up? It's incredibly frustrating. This animal is from such a tiny geography, you'd think you could wall it in and protect it. There is one place in Madagascar that is trying to wall them in and protect them behind locks and razor wire. This national park deep in a forest. Are these automatic rifles? They certainly are, yep. Richard Lewis is with the British conservation group Durrell, which runs this refuge and breeding center. Be careful of the youngsters here. They're all over the place. Yeah, just be careful. Oh, here's some. Watch where you step and okay. then come on over. These are oh, all adult word. males. Look at them. Do you know how old they are? This could be 50 years old, 100 years old, 150, 200 years old. I mean, this is the longest lived animal on the planet. Their longevity is one of the reasons they're so valuable. Asian collectors believe owning one confers long life on them. The black market trade is now so lucrative that crime syndicates are involved. The center was robbed in the late 1990s in what was called one of the heists of the century. So people actually broke into this compound, the breeding yeah. center, with all the security and stole... 75 youngsters and two adults. They stole, at that moment in time, it was half of our, half of the youngsters we've, we'd ever bred. Since then, with the help of Eric Good, the population of plowshares here has rebounded. This is the female enclosure. These girls are responsible for producing 300 offspring, 300 animals that you're looking at in mm -hmm. this entire enclosure. Very few people have ever seen them actually produce offspring, even here. But as we were just about to leave, one of the females wandered off, and to everyone's surprise, began to dig a nest for laying eggs. Richard, mm -hmm. have you ever seen this before? No. You not have never not seen? Not me personally, no. It's the luck of the draw, as it were. Being a tortoise, the work was very slow and very plodding. 
Yeah, it's remarkable. You think those legs are just these stubby elephantine feet, but they're very good at cupping the soil, digging this incredible little hole. Yeah, and she could be, what, 60, 70 years old? Yep. Yeah, 100 years old. It took her almost an hour, and then... <gasps> oh, there's the egg. Oh, my God. Oh Are she going to do gonna, another one? Yep, yep. Oh, there it yep. goes. There it goes. Oof. Number two. This is what you work for. Yep. And, and even more so when the little tortoise and the hatchling comes out, it is, you feel like you've broken a secret code. Good wants to emulate this kind of success back in the United States with not just plowshares, but dozens of other species. He has his own breeding center in the mountains outside of Los Angeles that he began with 150 turtles and tortoises given to him for safekeeping by the Bronx Zoo. They were trucked across the United States and they were the first uh, guest in my tortoise hotel. Each species is pampered like a guest at one of Good's hotels with fresh cut flowers, salad greens, and a tortoise smoothie blended with organic milk. Each species needs a different ecosystem. Like this tortoise, for example, is from Burma, and this is biologically extinct in the wild. And these guys need to be kept warm and uh, very high humidity. He now has 680 animals from 30 endangered species. This is a turtle from India and Bangladesh, and maybe a little bit into Pakistan. And these turtles that elsewhere would be on the menu. It's called the golden coin turtle probably one of the top 25 most endangered turtles in the world. And young Galapagos tortoises that'll grow to 400 pounds. These were bred in Texas at a zoo and they've been raised here. Don't come for my toes. But Eric Good says he doesn't want any of his guests to stay too long. Ideally, we'd like to send these animals back to the, to the wild. Why would you send them back? There, there's no protection for them back in the wild. It may be too soon to send a lot of them back. And yeah. can you? I mean, let's be realistic. I don't know yet, but I think it's important to show that we're not just bringing animals into captivity and keeping them there forever. For now, he's fulfilling his dream by protecting 11 plowshares and trying to breed more. Last year, he hatched 250 other tortoises and turtles. Eric Good is like Noah, building a safe haven for, in some cases, the last of these animals on Earth.